Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Marty and today we are starting the process of making a 16th century Italian Renaissance dress. And I'm super excited about this project, so much so that I don't have the proper foundation garments yet. So if this is something you're interested in, please stay tuned. If not, I'll catch you in a different video. When I first started this project, I did not know exactly what I wanted the pattern to be, so I did what any good person would do, and I went to my books. Um, I knew that I wanted the shape and silhouette of the Eleanor de Toledo gown, so that made me go to Jana Arnold's Patterns of Fashion, where she did a study of the burial gown. But because I like more than one reference, and because these two books are roughly within like two decades, um, dated to the same time period, I also looked at Matthew Nagy's um, The Modern Maker Volume 2, and that was my launching off point for this project. Okay, so this is kind of fun to see the difference in the pattern. This is the um, Eleanor to Toledo burial gown pattern that I've sized up from Janet Arnold, and then this is an Alsega Spanish pattern that I have drafted proportionally to my measurements. It's really interesting to see the difference in the arms eyes and to see that it's a full shoulder piece instead of just like a long shoulder piece connecting at the front. On the stays underneath the bodice it was the opposite so the long shoulder piece was on the front and it connected in the back. It's almost like when this dress was commissioned, they said, I want it in the Spanish style. And so they took this and they guessed and came up with that. Because it's very similar, but it's like very much a, if I don't know what I'm doing, I'm going to guess um, and it's going to be different. So it's kind of cool to see that difference um, and to see how it just, it changes. So currently I am trying to decide if I want to do the pattern for the burial gown or the Alsega pattern. Um, I'm leaning more towards the Alsega pattern because I have more experience with those and I know that that's going to fit me better. But I might copy the waistline from the Toledo pattern, the Jana Arnold pattern. So probably just going to do a mishmash of both. Granted. The point piece that I drafted is very similar to the Jana Arnold pattern. So I might just make a mock up out of that and see how it fits. Um, I am super picky about how arm size fits, which is why I'm leaning away from the Jana Arnold pattern and towards the Elsega pattern. It'll still get me the same shape that I want. You know what? I'm, I'm just going to make a mock-up of both because I just want to see how this looks. Okay, so these are the two mock-ups. This is the Jana Arnold, and then this is the Alsega. Um, what is interesting is that this one, I just took it up a little bit to make that more even. Um, and I thought that this would be too high, but really, once you take out the seam allowance, it's not. It, that would be a very, it would still be high, but it would be comfortable. Um, and then the lines in the back are really smooth and really pretty. Um, for this one, it's a lot more room under the arm's eye, as we can see here. Um, which I don't think I need. 
honestly, and if I were to tighten that up, granted, I need to try this on my actual body before I do that, but if I were to tighten that up, it's almost the same arm as I as the Jana Arnold pattern. Um, the only difference is, instead of the side, that clean side back that the Jana Arnold has, the Alsega is more of a side pattern. So, it would be interesting to see how much I need to take out and how that alters it. Um, all of the Italian things that I have seen have more of a true side back, so I might actually go with the Janet Arnold pattern over the Alsega one, just for the sake of getting that side back look that I'm going for. Um, the only thing I don't like is how far off the straps are. But I did add an inch to the center back and the center front. So if I take that out again and I put it here, put like a solid inch on the front panel, um, that would fix that issue. And it would make this more on the back, which is really what I want. Okay, so I kind of got sewing and got distracted and forgot to film. So I faked pad stitching because I don't have the patience to do all the hand sewing. Like I tried, you see, I tried real pad stitching right there, don't have the patience for it. So I just ran channels down and it flattened the like five layers of padding so you can see it's pretty stiff. Yeah, so it like holds its shape. So I'm kind of excited about that. I'm gonna put this as the interlining when I make the actual dress. So that's exciting. Um, if I like the way that this like lays over, um, inside things, then I'm probably going to do my more dresses like this. So we'll see. I haven't actually put this on my body yet either, <laughs> so maybe I should do that. Spoiler alert, I in fact did not try it on, but I had attempted to make a pair of stays beforehand using the same pattern and knew that that fit well enough, so I wasn't entirely worried about the fit of the actual dress. Next, it was on to cutting out the rest of the bodice pieces, including the front fashion fabric and the fashion fabric for the back of the dress, as well as the interlining layer for the back of the dress. Once I had all of that cut out, it was time to start putting it together. I quickly realized that half an inch of seam allowance was not nearly enough, so I proceeded to recut the fashion layer with the measurement of seam allowance that I actually needed. I could have just cut extra instead of wasting fabric, but that's not what I did. Once I had managed the proper seam allowance, I began folding it over and pinning it down to finish the edge of the fashion fabric. I did this on both the front and back pieces. When you are doing this, I would highly recommend working from the center out and making sure to smooth your interlining fabric as you go. That way you don't have to constantly readjust and repin like I had to do. So update, um, I've gotten the front piece completely pinned together, so now I just need to go through and stitch the edges and then give it a good press. Um, once I'm done with this piece, I will cut out the lining and do the same thing for the back. I am not excited for this amount of hand sewing, but it's gonna get done and it's going to look fabulous, so. 
don't know if there are like five different ways to do this in my head and <laughs> this is probably not the way I should be doing it but it's the way I'm going to do it so I'm going to reinforce the parts that I need to with this really thick crochet thread just because I want to make sure that those are super strong and reinforced before I go around and do anything else. The main points being right in these corners. So, I don't know how to do this and make it invisible. Why didn't I just bagline this? I know how to do that. Why didn't I just do that? After a mild panic attack, I decided to switch to a regular sewing thread weight um, that I had quadrupled up. So it was still thinner than the black thread I was originally going to use, but the added bonus of being able to match the color of my dress so it wasn't completely visible helped ease that anxiety and make it so I was more willing to do this amount of hand sewing. Um, I don't have a lot of footage of me actually sewing the thing together because the only way I could talk myself into doing all of this hand sewing consistently to make sure that it got done was to tell myself I did not have to get out of bed. And with all of that hand sewing out of the way, the bodice is complete. Alright guys, thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Make sure to subscribe and then come and find me on Instagram because that's where I keep all of my progress photos and everything. So I hope you have a great day. Bye.